What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. Today we are back on the CB500. If you missed the last video, try to get this thing running, but we determined there is extremely low compression in at least one cylinder. We had like 25 PSI. The number three cylinder had like 85, so not a whole heck of a lot better. Name of the game today is to tear into this thing, do a full top end rebuild, figure out what our issue was, and hopefully get it sorted. Got the bike up on one of my lifts and actually got it pulled away from the wall a little bit so we have a little bit more room to work. This isn't going to be a step-by-step how-to video on a top end rebuild on one of these engines. I've already done that before. I'll actually throw a card up right now if you wanna go and check that out. This is gonna be more just a uh, kind of entertaining me going through, pulling this engine apart, documenting what in the heck went wrong, why we have 25 PSI, hopefully fixing that issue, putting it all back together, and then at the end of the video, Ideally, this thing runs with uh, with great compression. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to pull off the tank, get the seat out of the way, the air box and carbs, to kind of start to strip out uh, some of the accessories, and then we can really start to dive into the engine itself. Me about 15 minutes or so i got all the accessories off so i'm ready to start stripping down the engine so what i'm going to do is basically just start from the very top we're going to pull this breather cover off we're going to pull the eight uh, valve tappet covers off actually going to loosen uh, each one as well just to make sure there's no pressure on any of the valve springs or anything once all that is done we're ready to pull off each end cap and then these jis screws all the way around so we can actually pull off the head cover I've mentioned this a million times, but it's worth mentioning again. If you guys do not have an impact driver, uh, get one. They are worth their weight in gold on these old Japanese bikes. These old JIS screws are, are very easy to strip without the proper tool. I'll throw a link to this one in the description below, uh, but they're pretty universal and they're not crazy expensive. Got the head cover off and now I'm just doing a quick visual inspection of all the valve springs you know make sure everything is in good shape nothing's broken no keepers have come out I've had that problem before that a, a keeper has come loose and it like makes a valve kind of hang open or the valve spring is just literally loose in here and luckily the valve never dropped in I've seen some crazy things before uh, all of this looks absolutely Fantastic. I'm also looking at the lobes of the camshaft as well. Make sure there's not any kind of crazy wear or scoring or anything like that. But honestly, this thing looks great on the inside so far. So I'm going to keep going. Next, I need to, I believe I need to loosen some chain tension. Uh, and then we're going to be able to undo these two 10 millimeter uh, bolts on the camshaft sprocket itself. Pull that out and then we'll be able to pull the cam out. Uh, I will throw a coat hanger in here as well just to keep our um, cam chain from dropping all the way down in the engine. Truth be told, it doesn't really matter at this point because once we have the head off, um, it's pretty easy to get back out. But that's a kind of common practice when you're working on the head is try to keep that cam chain from, uh, from dropping down into the crankcase. But so far, everything looks great. Nothing too crazy. So I'm going to keep diving in. All the uh, head bolts are out. We are ready to pull the head off. Should be able to just kind of wiggle back and forth. Over. 
feed our little coat hanger through. Come straight out with it. Easy enough. Put this in a safe spot. With the head out of the way, I went ahead and undid our cam chain tension. We're ready to pull the cylinders off. You might have to give this a slight little tap with a dead blow or rubber mallet or something like that just to kind of break that seal on the bottom. We should be able to slowly work this way. This up. Can't pull this out yet. chain will need to feed through. Set that up. Like that. So I'm starting to inspect everything here and truth be told I'm really not seeing the issue I thought I was going to see. So I was fully expecting these piston rings to be fully compressed and stuck in the ring lands. They're not right now. That doesn't mean, uh, you know, over the last day or two that they've kind of worked their way free or, you know, while I was just working on it, they could have like expanded out as soon as they came out of the cylinder, they kind of could have popped out. It doesn't mean they weren't previously stuck, but they're not right now. They really look quite good, which is a little bit on the concerning side. I you know, kind of would have almost rather found a broken one or something that would have pointed to an obvious problem, but I mean, the whole inside of this thing looks ridiculously clean. There's like not even any carbon or anything on top of these pistons. Pretty wild. Same deal with number three. This is the cylinder that had 85 PSI of compression. Everything looks normal. I don't see any yeah, there's no broken rings. There's nothing crazy to be seen. Looking on the inside of the cylinder walls as well, it all looks great. I mean, there's still cross hatching. There's no big grooves. There's no, there's really nothing of concern, which in and of itself is a bit concerning because something was causing our crazy low compression. Very interesting. I mean, the base gasket and everything all came off pretty easy. My gut is somebody has been in this uh, engine not too terribly long ago. I did notice there are two little O-rings that are supposed to be on top of the cylinders, but below the cylinder head on the very outside. Those are missing, so I'll make sure to uh, replace those in our kit. But so far, I don't really see anything too obvious, which is pretty surprising. I pulled off the number one and number two piston and just kind of stuck them back in the cylinders just to kind of compare how tight they are and the fit. Honestly, they feel very similar to me, just a little bit strange. I'm also looking around trying to see if there's any kind of head gasket failure, any evidence of that uh, that can lead to low compression. I don't really see anything here. So this is our number one, number two. So this had 125 PSI of compression. This had 25. We're just trying to compare the two to see if anything looks obviously you know, wrong with one side. Let me pull off this old head gasket. I mean, everything looks nice and clean. I don't see any damage or anything. I did just go ahead and grab my valve spring compressor. I'm gonna pull these valves out and then I'm gonna actually just uh, inspect the kind of valve seat around here, make sure there's no crazy carbon buildup or anything like that. Again, from the previous video, we put oil down the cylinders and that bumped our compression way up, which makes me think that it is not valve related, but I mean, while we're already here, I might as well double check them. And if they need to be lapped, uh, now would be a good time to do it. But so far, I don't see any obvious issues. Uh, the mystery continues. Went ahead and pulled the valves out and you can tell on here, the exhaust valve has a ton of carbon buildup. Not really, 
a concerning amount, in my honest opinion. Um, there's not like a, a huge chunk of it or anything like that. It's not the clean um, sealing surface we want. So I am going to uh, lap these valves. I already have my compound and my little suction cup thing ready to go. You can look on the head itself. There's not a huge amount of buildup, but enough that we're at this point, we might as well lap them. Uh, now's also the time to replace the valve stem seals um, because they're like literally right there. And when the valve's out, you can just take a set of needle nose pliers, pull them right out, stick the new ones on that come in the rebuild kit, no big deal. Over here is where things get interesting. So I wanted to check the uh, end gap, which is the little gap right there on the bottom of the screen that is in the piston rings to see if, okay, maybe our end gap is too big and that's not creating a great sealing uh, inside the cylinder. I'm actually finding the opposite of that. So according to the manual, the second piston ring should have a 0 0.02 uh, that's in inches. I think it's right at half a millimeter in metric. We're actually tighter than that. We're at 0 0.014. So we're six thousandths of an inch tighter gap than what the book even recommends, which would not uh, lead itself to a lower compression. If anything, that might even seal a little bit better until I've seen some <laughs> devastating things happen with too tight of an end gap where you can actually, if you have enough uh, cylinder pressure, it will push the thing totally together and you can actually snap off these little ring lands on the pistons luckily that didn't happen either but the saga continues it's very strange that uh, that's not a problem either so i'm just going to keep on going i'm going to go ahead and knock out the cylinder head go ahead and remove and clean off all of this gasket material We are ready to get our piston rings set up. So I'm gonna run you through all this really quick. So we have our new rings. They come in a kit with um, a top ring, a middle ring, and then an oil control ring, one in each box. So we are gonna match these up with each cylinder and each respective piston, and then we're gonna keep them together because there could be slight variances in the bore size. So we don't wanna set it for this bore and then end up using it in this one. We wanna make sure that they uh, continue to match. So naturally from the factory, they come a little bit tight and you're supposed to open them up. So we're just gonna start with, let's see, we're gonna start with this ring right here, which should be the top ring. I'm gonna slide it in here. And I'm gonna take another piston. I already have the top uh, two removed and I have the oil control ring still in here. What that allows me to do is put it in here upside down and just press down until that oil control ring hits all the way around then we know the ring is in there nice and even all the way around. Then we can measure it. So there's just that little bit of a gap. We take our feeler gauge. It's probably gonna be somewhere in the 8,000th range. Eight, let's try nine. Yep, let's try 10. Should be right, looks like it's about 10 or 11 right now. Uh, 10. And for the top ring, I got my manual right here. We're looking for 30 thousandths of an inch. So we need to take 20 thousandths out of it. How we're gonna do that is right over here on my vise, I have a file set up. I can take the ring, put it around there. I'm just gonna run it just like this. And what that's gonna do is just start to evenly remove material from both sides. And you want to sneak up on this, so just run it a couple of times, make sure there's no burrs on there. Gently stick this back in. Any uh, piston ring, if you move it too far, like kind of uh, separated from each other, they'll snap and they'll shatter. So be very careful when you're working with them that you don't go twisting them too much. Okay, nice and even in there. And we just keep measuring. So we went from 10 to only about 14 feels like. So obviously that wasn't nearly enough, but you guys get the process. So I'm gonna go through and set this gap to 30, and then the second ring and the oil control ring both get set to 20 thousandths. Once that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and install them on our piston. I do have a special set of uh, pliers for this. I'll throw a link to these two um, that just help you to install and uninstall them without breaking them. 
And I'm gonna install them and then I'm actually going to stick this piston in that cylinder so I don't get anything mixed up. Once that's done, we'll just move on and do the other three. So hopefully that all made sense. It'll take a little while, but uh, I'll get it knocked out. Starting to put everything back together. One thing I think I forgot to mention is I did actually hit each cylinder uh, with a quick hone. And the point of that is just to kind of reestablish that crosshatch pattern. Not sure if you'll be able to see that or not. Uh, the factory cross hatching was actually still there, but while you have it apart, it's not a bad idea to hit it with a quick hone. We don't want to remove any crazy amounts of material or anything like that. We just want to clean up the cylinder walls and then go ahead and set your piston uh, ring gap after you've done that. So now is going to be basically an exact repeat of taking it all apart with the exception of actually putting in some of the proper O-rings that were missing last time. So I'm going to go ahead and start to get this put all the way back together. Little progress report for you. The whole top end is all back together, including a cam chain adjustment and uh, adjusting all the valves as well. All that came together really nicely. Everything's turning over nice and smooth, no issues to report. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the carbs, the exhaust, throw in spark plugs, and we're gonna be ready to start this thing here in maybe about 10 minutes. We are ready for the first start. So I've been going over the checklist in my head. I haven't found anything that I forgot, so I think we should be good to go. Uh, really quickly, you'll find a whole bunch of different uh, kind of break-in procedures online for how to seat these rings. There's a million different people that are gonna say a million different things. For me, basically, I just don't want the RPMs to stay kind of static for too long. So I don't wanna let it sit in idle for a long time when I go out and test ride it. I don't want to stay at a consistent RPM. I want to kind of vary uh, gears, kind of run up through the gears. Probably not beat on it too hard for at least the first, I don't know, maybe 100, 200 miles, something like that. Um, but other than that, it's going to be just fine. So I, I expect it to smoke a decent amount just because we have oil in the cylinders. We got grease from our hands on the exhaust. I tried to wipe a lot of that off, but it's going to smoke a little bit. Fuel on, key on. This is the moment of truth where we find out very quickly if I forgot something. Uh, I'm going to turn it over with no ignition first, just to kind of test everything. Not bad. Oil pressure light went off. Alright, let's turn the spark on and see what it does.
first fire any day of the week. Two thumbs up. I am extremely pleased with how that first start went. I mean, once it uh, started to pull some fuel through, the ring started to seat a little bit, fired right up. It would have sat and idled like a sewing machine, which is exactly how these things should sound. Uh, but again, I didn't want it to sit at one RPM for too long. Seemed to rev nice and free. We'll do a little bit more carb tuning and stuff here, um, probably in the next video. Uh, also go ahead and probably do a vacuum sink. That does uh, wonders for these old bikes. But again, I didn't want it to sit for too terribly long. I'm very, very pleased. So this is something you can 100% do yourself. I do have a how-to video. I probably mentioned it earlier in this video. Uh, I'll make sure there's a link in the description to that if you're wanting to tackle this yourself. Uh, I could probably do it in, I would say, six hours start to finish without filming. So you should just expect maybe a weekend to be able to knock it out. It's really not that big of a deal. So uh, I did forget to install my new uh, stator cover gasket. So I'll go ahead and knock that out um, off camera. In the next video, we are actually going to be taking this bike out on a test drive. So I hope you guys stick around and uh, come back for that video, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. I'm gonna stop rambling. I'll see you guys in the next one.